Uh, our next speaker is Gary Williams from Schneider Electric. Uh, he has more than 40 years of experience in designing and implementing communication networks, uh, secure communication networks for industry, military, and law enforcement. Uh, privy, excuse me, previously to joining Schneider, uh, he spent 22 years in the British Navy, retiring with a commission as Chief Communications Technician. General Hayden, we're, we're good with British Navy, right? They weren't one of the flags of shame. We're good? Sweet. Okay. Uh, Gary holds several patents in the arena of enhanced safety systems and is an active board member of numerous uh, standard bodies, such as ISA Secure and IEC. Today, with Schneider Electric, uh, he is the Senior Director of Technology, Cybersecurity, and Communication, and provides guidance and support to customers, as well as the industry and internal Schneider organizations. Gary, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, besides, besides my uh, strategic role as Senior Director for Cybersecurity for our products, I have a tactical role as well. And that tactical role is forensic investigator and auditor. So the job satisfaction that I get, because strategy takes ages before you get job satisfaction, is actually working with the clients on what they perceive to be a compromise or an attack. The good news is 90% of the call-outs are down to somebody doing something stupid. They've either connected something in or they thought that they could configure it or whatever. However, it's changing. And what I want to bring up is if you follow the European standards from the 28th of May this year, if your company deals with personal data of a European citizen and you get breached, the fine is 20 million euros or 4% of your global revenue for every breach. Okay, it doesn't bother us because we're in oil, gas and petrochemical. Well, another directive is every country that makes up Europe must by the 4th of May have in their law the National Network Information Security Directive, which also means that oil, gas, petrochemical, water, transport, anything that makes up the critical national infrastructure if there's a breach, 20 million euros, 4% of the global revenue. If somebody takes over an industrial site, of course, it can result in loss of production, damage to the environment, and loss of life. And these are the drivers that we need to look at when it comes to industry. It's all well and good Schneider Electric investing in making our products secure to the best of their ability to be resilient against attack. But when we give it to you, to the customers, you're going to connect it to devices we have no visibility of, connect it to other systems, and as was said by my colleagues this morning, it's all based on risk. Every time you connect two things together, you increase risk. You need to measure it and mitigate it. Every time you remove a legacy protocol for doing things like Internet of Things, you are increasing risk. It needs to be measured and mitigated. Something else that's going on is five years ago, when I went to my CEO and said, I need some money for cybersecurity, I got nowhere. Why? Because they thought we were selling a life insurance. But now we've actually got the metrics to show that, on average, $3.8 million for a breach. And there are companies out there that have spent more. And the truth is, these figures are still growing because it's not just about identifying, mitigating, doing the investigation, the forensics, working with government bodies, working with standards bodies. You've also got your share price, your loss of confidence from your client, etc. You put these metrics in front of your CEO, I guarantee you will get money. Another thing that I've seen coming up recently is insurance. So insurance companies have found it very difficult to identify risk on your plant. Why? Because it's operational technology. They've always relied on information technology to calculate risk. But they're a totally different environment. So on your next insurance premium, don't be surprised if you see to which standard do you comply? Company, country or international? In Europe from next month, 
Anybody that makes up the critical national infrastructure must be national compliance. Now, on the negative side, every time these countries come out with their own standard, it fragments and devalues the international standard. Luckily, a lot of them are based on standards such as IEC 62443. Do you have an incident response procedure and do you practice it? With my auditing role, I go onto sites and I'd like to see your incident response procedure. Very well documented, great matrix, put it all together. They've never taken it out of the box. They've never practiced it. And until you start doing your incident response procedures and actually practicing it, not just tabletop exercises, but take a part of a plant and involve everybody. It increases the education of your people, and at the same time, you get to understand the cause and consequence of something untoward happening to an asset. Safety and security basically go hand in hand. And if you look at the evolution of cybersecurity, it very much follows safety. Safety is protecting um, man against machine. Security is now trying to protect man, oh sorry, the machine against man. If you're going to do a risk and threat assessment or a gap analysis, please work with your safety department. They have the same culture of cause, consequence with their hazards and low paths. Do you have agreements with third parties in case of a breach? I would love nothing more than to ask you to hold your hand up if you do. Because remember I said that you take one of our systems and you connect it to another system and then you connect it to a device that belongs to another company. If that is breached, do you have the expertise on site to be able to respond? The chances are not. And so when you go through these incident response procedures, you actually identify your gaps and then you should reach out to the vendor, put something in place that if this was to take place, can we call you, who do we call, what's your response time, etc. And then finally, do you have an exercise of patching methodology? So when I got the questions, I picked up the phone and rang Lloyds of London and said, really impressed, great renewal notice. Where did you get the information from? You've never been able to measure risk in our industries. And the answer was IEC 62443. Somebody actually read our own standards and identified the risk. So now, there's normally 10 questions on these renewal notices. Depending on how you answer this, depends what the cost is going to be. So, with the new regulations that are coming in, the new mandates that are coming in, the new drivers that we've got, what is it that's driving it? Well, obviously it's threat, which brings me on to Triton. Okay, fact. August the 4th, 2017, an unexplained emergency shutdown took place on a site in the Middle East. A safety system, as was pointed out by the General this morning, is you have a, prom, a DCS, and this wasn't our DCS, but you have a DCS that controls all of your process. And then we build a safety system to say if something anomalous happens, or if you do something that's going to cause an upset, these things are designed to take it down, to stop it from coming to a catastrophic event. That's exactly what this system did. So, of course, we started the detailed investigation. It revealed multiple site security lapses. Um, it enabled the sophisticated attack. So, basically, the attacker who wasn't in the company and wasn't even in the country. Okay? So, he made his way through the system to the safety system and they put um, a, a rat on there, which is the, the remote malware. The safety system detected the anomaly and therefore it shut it down to safe state. The attack itself, looking over the evidence, um, is highly sophisticated. Uh, it was aimed at one company. It was aimed at that company's total operation and the malware itself is not capable of self-replicating. When it happened, you'll have seen the Schneider Electric decided to go totally public. Why? Well, when we saw this, the first thing you think is, well, it's our piece of equipment, we need to go in there and find out what happened, you know, what was the intent? But when we did the investigation, the safety system is there for a purpose, to protect any catastrophic incident caused by 
something malfunctioning or intentional attack within the DCS. This attack, the Triton side of it, is only a small portion of the larger intent. Now, although we don't have evidence to prove it because the attacker actually made a mistake that caused this to happen, we believe that what he was trying to do was cause a catastrophic event, which means if you're going to smash the car and you want the driver taken out, make sure the seatbelt doesn't wield. So it's a much bigger picture. So we decided to go to you, to the government bodies, we're working with the standards bodies, and we're saying that this is an industry problem. And it is an industry problem. And the reason being is that the distributed control system was one vendor. The safety system was ours. But for that operator to get in there, for the attacker to get in there, just sit back and think a second. When he comes in over the internet, he has to come into your company, and then from your company, he's got to get down to your DMZ, and then from the DMZ, he's got to get into your process area, and from your process area, he's got to get into your safety area. It's huge. The amount of resources and time required to be able to take out one company is enormous. So the question is, could it have been stopped? Well, I'm not going to contradict the general, so there's no such thing as a completely secure system. However, if you follow best practices, policies and procedures, and you've broken your network down into zones and conduits, this is the ISA 99 Purdue model, and you look at the enterprise, the site business, and then at layer three, this is where your DMZ is going to come in, and from there on down, it's all to do with your process. So that attack that I've just mentioned means that the guy had to compromise the enterprise system, compromise the next, compromise the next, compromise the next, and only then could the attacker got to the safety system. Now, there is one caveat I'll put on this, if you have a safety system that's followed this model, and because you need your Microsoft patches or your antivirus, if you connect that bottom layer to any layer above, you're increasing risk, and it needs to be measured. So from a document perspective, it's very easy to show a segmented architecture. But in practice, is it really done? Do you actually bypass three of these layers in order to facilitate the Microsoft patches and the antivirus? because it saves you time and resources. We appreciate the financial saving. We appreciate that you might not have the necessary skill set on the plant, but every time you bypass one of these, you're increasing risk. So let's go back to the attack. Very sophisticated. It required a long time frame. This was not something that the hacktivist did. This wasn't done for monetary gain. And in IEC 62443 security level perspective, it is a level four attack. Because this attack took place near enough on two years, and they had to compromise the whole system in order to get down to the safety system. Had the system been segmented, however, we know that the systems that we're talking about are 30 and 40 years old. They were never designed with security in force. Is it feasible that on this particular site they just had one flat network? In which case I only have to compromise one or two layers. But whenever you're looking at your DCS, you have a responsibility that if you're going to connect one vendor to another, if you're going to connect two devices or two systems together, it's going to increase the risk. You need to measure it and you need to mitigate it. We don't expect you to have the answers, but reach out to the vendors because they will help you because they have a liability too. This is definitely a level four attack. It is the control system. It is the safety system. So what we did is we reached out and used our friends in the press. We've come for a call to action. The ramifications of Triton extend far beyond any one site or system and supplier. As we saw with the Ukraine, as we saw with this attack, it's one site that they were taken out. We believe this was politically driven, but with no proof because the guy made a mistake. The possibility of attacks on systems in this new era of the industrial internet of things, as those vendors are pushing out these 50 billion devices that are all going to be connected, how many of them have actually taken security into consideration from concept to delivery? And the answer is very few. 
which means that if you want to capitalize on this big data and get the value from it, you're going to subscribe to those devices. As soon as you subscribe to those devices, the onus is on you to do the risk measurement, risk and threat, gap analysis, and mitigate the risk. What I wanted to take away from this is that there are um, three points that we'll come on to for this presentation. But from the years that I've been doing this, honestly, the most valuable department other than cybersecurity is your safety department. The cultures are the same. The synergies are immense. And the three points I want you to take are process. You need to implement a risk-based defense in depth. Securing automation systems. IEC 62443 is the standard we subscribe to because it covers everything from supply chain right the way through to system design. You need to strengthen, implement, and follow relevant standards and best practices. It's all well and good the vendor doing it and trying to give you a resilient system, but if you're going to connect it to something, then you have to take on the responsibility of addressing the risk. Please follow the vendor provided guidelines, recommendations, and practices. Because in this particular case, that wasn't it. Although they got the manual with the device that they bought, they never read it. The safety system in question was created in 2001. It was sold to the client in 2007 by a third party. For the first year, they signed up so that they could get the updates. And after that, it expired and nobody ever bothered again. So if you're going to buy something, please follow the vendor's recommendations and make cybersecurity part of your whole operations lifecycle. Now, from a technology perspective, and this is not just the clients in the room, but also um, the vendors, uh, identify, minimize, and secure all network connections to automation systems. If you don't need the protocol, don't let it through. If you don't need the port, don't let it through. It's all about the conduit. If you can ensure the conduit is designed to meet that criteria, you're going to increase your safety. Improve product security across the supply chain and the development process. Again, IEC 62443 actually gives criteria for vendors to follow. Collaborate to improve standards, applications, and ease of implementation. So that's from the technology perspective. I've been on site, and if I, I've seen engineers, if their screen shudders or something goes wrong, they get out the screwdriver, they'll change a cable because they think it's something electronic or something wrong with the system. If you educate those people on the shop floor, they are your first alert that something untoward's gone wrong, but they're also your first line of defense. Investing in people is the biggest return you're ever gonna get. So you need to educate all those involved in operations, maintenance, engineering, and the whole automation system. Engage industry resources to step up and develop a pervasive cybersecurity culture and constantly innovate. Implement those cybersecurity practices, policies, and procedures, and this too is about collaboration. The conclusion our industry is under assault. That's not me trying to sell by fear. The industrial control systems of this world are under assault. And it can come from the hacktivist, it can come from uh, monetary, or it can come from um, state-sponsored. We have a duty to respond to Triton. Um, it demands that we design, operate, and protect more secure future for everyone. It requires everyone to work together, suppliers, third parties, integrators, standards bodies, and government. And as the general said this morning, they're not going to come out and mandate something unless you, the people, ask them to. So when you're looking at your safety system or if you're looking at your operations in general, remember, we're trying to protect the people on the plant, the communities around the plant, and the environment. So we implore you to reach out and start pushing the standards and your government bodies to ensure that we do adopt a cybersecurity culture that addresses the risk that we're adopting by this new technology.